Don't Starve has been in my peripheral vision for years, with Steam constantly showing me this guy's face. The survival and crafting genre has largely been something that disinterests me since you're in menus very often, so this safely stayed outside the wavelength of games I'd actually play for a very long time. Besides my friends recommending it, it wasn't until I realized just how mechanically sound it all was, and how deliberate it felt in its design, that I started to take an interest. And even if there is one giant glaring issue in one of its core mechanics, it's really difficult to find a video game that feels as fulfilling in its moment-to-moment -moment feel as either of the don't starve games. Both games are constantly taking from you. It's a really carefully balanced panic where there is always one vital resource or need that you need to seek out to stay alive. The game is always nudging you in a direction to keep yourself afloat. It's fast, it's crazy, it's fun, and it's everything I love about game design. And again, this applies to both the first game in the series, Don't Starve, the original title that not only had a good base game but multiple DLCs with completely different mechanics, and Don't Starve Together the current title that gets more frequently updated and has not only a lot more content, but a system where you can periodically unlock new cosmetics. They are basically survival games in fast motion. Inconveniences that would be annoying in other games like your hunger meter and resource usage end up feeling exponentially interesting here. While a lot of people don't mind that Minecraft eventually included a hunger bar, it's easy to tell that it's not something that's essential to the game's base DNA. At times, it can feel like something that was just included so that there was more of a game component overall. Whereas in Don't Starve, it feels more calculated in how the developers included it. I mean, it's in the game's title of all things. Your hunger meter drains abnormally fast, and even after you've gotten into a nice groove of tending to your base and making sure you've got a lot of the essentials, it's still easy to accidentally get complicit and have it sneak up on you. And this forces you to constantly put yourself in danger. It's like the game is giving you a routine that you naturally discover, and by the time you take a step back and realize what you're doing, you understand, oh, this is the game. I wasn't in Clay's offices when they were designing this game, but I think that one of the things they probably had on their whiteboard when they were conceptualizing the whole thing was bring the game to the player. And what I mean by that is, if you don't want to go to the nether because it's too difficult, you can obviously just not go there. But in Don't Starve, the seasonal changes are always keeping you on your toes because they affect the entire map. Sure, you might have gotten past winter after making the proper clothing, but all of those wooden chests you made to hold on to your stuff before are gonna erupt into flames in the summer. And these problems you're presented with don't have just one solution. I was able to largely survive the summer by using a boomerang on nearby birds so I could cook the morsels that were dropped as it was too warm to travel very far. But it's also very possible to juggle your sleep patterns carefully to take some unnecessary heat off yourself while you fight nearby spiders for monster food. There's also several bosses that can really disrupt the nice flow you've set for yourself after surviving multiple days, and they basically act as checks to make sure you've been making the right equipment and items to defeat them. Though the combat itself has a lot of issues that might prevent people from getting into Don't Starve at all, but we'll get back to that. As I kind of touched on earlier, one of the main things I just love about Don't Starve is the multiple ways you can survive. You can lay traps, just rely on your melee items, or even train a beefalo to make it easier to travel and protect yourself. And I wouldn't worry too much if this seems overwhelming, because you can make a very decent amount of progress without engaging with all of the game's systems. I've survived the whole in-game year, for instance, without having to use any of the beefalo mechanics. Yet, None of this is even taking into account all the different characters you can play as. Wilson might be pretty bare bones in that all he does is grow a beard, but a character like Weber is actually friendly with spiders, so it's beneficial to base near a nest where you can swarm nearby baddies. Just to put this all into perspective, I think there'd have been a lot of replayability if Wilson was the only playable character in this game on account of all the different approaches you can take, but the addition of other characters just makes it even more vast in scope. As I've already shown in this video, the game gets compared to Minecraft a lot, and while I think some comparisons are useful for getting a point across, I do think that they fill very different niches. Obviously, Minecraft is more about the house and build customization. You're able to easily bend the world's shape and format because of its art style and grid. Don't Starve doesn't have any verticality in its exploration, and most of your enjoyment is going to come from the constant requirements to survive that it's piling on you. With all of that being said, I do think it'd be very nice to have more decorative options for your base. One popular mod lets you stack walls on top of each other, and I can definitely see the appeal since, after poor 
pouring dozens of hours into both of these games, you realize not being able to make a roof dooms all your structures into looking like the set of a sitcom. Putting all of that to the wayside, I need to address the glaring issue I mentioned at the beginning of this video. That's correct, I have to talk to you about the combat. I regret telling you that the combat is really, really bad, especially in Don't Starve Together, which doesn't have the most accurate netcode by a long shot. Hitboxes for enemy attacks were already wonky in the original offline game, and having a weird online latency over the whole thing just leads to some really, really frustrating moments. There's no interlocking mechanics here or creative ways to dodge attacks. If what you're seeing on screen looks underwhelming to you, it's because it is. With that in mind, I still think that the combat brings a lot of worth to the game, and it does give you some really great moments. When I defeated a deer clops for the first time, that feeling wasn't amazing because of a really intricate combat system where I had to dodge, weave, and prompt special attacks over and over. It was amazing because me managing to beat it was the result of my preparation for its arrival by rationing food and having the right equipment. I'm not going to pretend that Don't Starve or Don't Starve Together are perfect games. For one, getting momentum early on can stagnate in the worst possible way every now and again. Flintstones are a pivotal resource to making both axes and pickaxes, but some runs at the very beginning will have you walking endlessly around the map trying super hard to find one to no avail. And with how long these games have been out at this point, it's hard to figure out why this is still an issue. An easy solution, of course, is to turn up the Flintstone spawn rate in the world generation screen. And while that's totally fine, I think that the default Don't starve experience should not have this issue in the first place. A first time player might feel reluctant to change any of these settings since it can tamper with the developer's original vision. There's also the fact that the bulk of the new content comes to Don't Starve Together and not its predecessor. And it's very obvious every now and again that the world generation is balanced for four players regardless of how many people are in the game. Meaning if you want to play a nice solo offline experience that's balanced for one player, you can't. And while I understand that discovery is a sizable part of what makes this game fun, you do find yourself opening wikis more often than you'd like since the game doesn't want to tell you anything. All of that being said though, these issues are surprisingly minute in the grand scheme of my relationship with this game. I still feel as if I've only gotten a brief glance at what DS and DST have to offer, and I'm excited to keep exploring its murky caves and brave its harsh climates into the future. As I said at the beginning of this video, Don't Starve was in my peripheral for years, but it would take that initial push from my friends who would recommend the game to me for me to really dive in, and I'm really, really glad that I did. Don't Starve isn't a must play for fans of survival games, it's a must play for fans of good video games. That's gonna be it for today guys, please do all the typical things that content creators ask you to do, like, comment, subscribe, etc. It really, really does help. There's a Discord invite in the description as well if you're interested in joining. I would absolutely love to see you there. We are trying to hit the 400 member mark. It's a very active place, I think you'll really like it. Thanks so much, and have a wonderful night. Buh bye bye